Hey everybody, um, gonna do another video today uh, showing the differences in ICF and regular framing and also SIP panels. And today we're gonna focus on thermal bridging and why thermal bridging is bad, how to avoid it with all three types of construction and why I think ICF is the easiest and best answer for thermal bridging. And, um, but before I get into it, I'm going to show you guys an example of thermal bridging in the real world in Springfield uh, on a job I noticed uh, a few weeks ago when it was very cold. You can see it plainly from outside. So I'm gonna take you in there real quick. I'm gonna show you inside the attic, show you why it looks the way it does from the outside. And then we'll come back in here and talk about the differences. Okay, so a while back, I saw this perfect example of thermal bridging at a house that we have retrofitted with spray foam. It's an older home, but it's got a spray foam roof deck like we do on a lot of modern homes, but there is no insulation at all in the garage. So the garage can bridge the warm air from the attic right through the roof deck and the rafters. And as you can see, plainly, there is no frost on the roof there because it's the, the warm air is bridging through the roof. But over here, we have the spray foam roof deck, but it wasn't a perfect spray foam job and the rafters were left exposed below the foam so the warm air is able to heat those rafters and the, the heat is conducted through the rafters and it melts the frost directly above the rafters, but everything else is insulated so well that the frost remains. So it's a classic example of thermal bridging and I'll take you inside here in a minute and show you what it looks like from the inside out and you'll understand why a little better. But this is what you really want to avoid with your house is um, all these bridges that allow for inefficiencies. But this is gonna put thermal bridging on display really easily because the foam job is, is not very good. In here, I'm actually gonna have them touch this up. But you can see the rafters, sometimes they didn't cover them at all and sometimes they just covered them kind of shoddily. And so those, you know, these insulated, um, Attics don't get very hot or very cold. They get a little more so than the actual house, but they, they are kind of conditioned space. They're enclosed, so all your duct work is uh, protected in insulated space. But because I can see these rafters, when it, gets, when it gets cold outside and starts to frost, this area here has got like a blanket of insulation that won't conduct the heat out and let it melt the frost, but it will conduct heat through that through that rafter and melt the frost, which is why you can see every single rafter on this entire house. So that's kind of thermal bridging in a nutshell. Imagine that this is your wall and you have sheetrock right there screwed to those, you know, studs and you've got, you know, 30 feet of those things on your house ready, uh, conducting heat or cold into your house right onto your sheetrock. And that's you know, just making your HVAC system work much harder. And that's, that's a really good example of thermal bridging that I can show you. Over here's the cold wall that goes into the garage and I'll take you in there right now and show you, you know, that there's no insulation and the entire thing conducts heat. And that's why there's no frost on that part because the warmer attic is able to melt the frost off. So really interesting little deal. I mean, it's, I don't like that this uh, insulation isn't done right, but it proves a very valuable point. Okay, so now I'm in the attic above the garage where it is a lot hotter. There's no insulation. This is the cold wall that separates the garage from the envelope of the house and the insulated attic. So you can see there's no insulation at all. And that's why there's no frost on the roof because it is conducting the heat from the from the attic out and melting off the frost. So that's why you can actually see right along that line is where you're seeing on the roof in that picture I showed you a second ago. And that's that's why thermal bridging is bad because it also does the same from the outside to in. And if you can't avoid it, and it's very hard to avoid with framing, wood framing, but I'll get into it in the rest of the video, the options uh, with uh, SIPs and uh, ICF that really uh, mitigate completely thermal bridging if done correctly. Okay, so now that we've shown you an example of thermal bridging and what it's doing in the real world, I'm gonna show you first the framed wall, the typical frame wall, zip board, and what you have is a stud every 16 inches that is a thermal bridge. The, the wood is a conductive material. It's gonna conduct heat a lot more than a fiberglass bat or spray foam insulation, cellulose. So if, you're, if your house is cool and the, the outside's hot, it's going to conduct that heat in onto your sheetrock and it's gonna warm the room. It's gonna make your air conditioner work harder. That might not sound like a lot, it's just an inch and a half stud, but on a 200 foot perimeter house, which is a normal 2000 square foot house, you're gonna have about 200 feet of perimeter wall. You're gonna have about 200 studs. It's like 28 feet 
if you just stacked them up like this, took all your studs and stacked them up, 28 feet of that 200 foot perimeter may be wood, not insulation. So it's almost like a grill running all the way around your house, just heating or cooling up, cooling your house. So you want to try to mitigate that, and I'll get into things you can do to mitigate it on a framed house if that's the route you're going. And right now you'll probably come to the same conclusion I have that with lumber prices the way they are, the extra cost of the mitigation is going to make ICF or SIP panels more cost effective at the moment. But I'll at least tell you how to do it if you want to do it. First thing, you need a continuous insulation barrier, meaning a foam board behind here. Zip makes zip R, which has one half up to two and a half inches of foam on the back. There are installation complications with it, but it is a cool product. But given that regular zip is already $55 a sheet right now, which is insane to me, zip R, I can't even get a price locally on a, it's Sunday and I looked on the internet. I can't call my lumber yards, but zip R is not even available without special ordering it because it's so high priced. Nobody around here in Missouri is buying it but that will give you the continuous barrier um, that you're looking for. They also make studs now that are engineered with a foam core. So instead of it being a full two by six, it'll be wood, foam, wood, breaking that thermal bridge, which is great. It's an awesome idea. Just, it's lumber and it's expensive right now. Um, if you do those things, you can mitigate, you know, 75% of the thermal bridging. The other thing is doing what they call advanced framing methods and that typically involves going to two foot centers instead of 16 inch. Your corners will be something we call like a California corner where the insulation can get in behind the corner so your corner's not, and, um, not inaccessible for insulation. And your headers will be insulated with a thermal break as well. So all of the areas that are bridging can't bridge anymore. But again, it's a lot of extra work. It's a ton of extra money right now to do all of that. Whereas ICF and the SIP panels that I'm getting ready to talk about, do it for you just in the nature of their system it's done so i'm going to talk about sit panels right now i don't have an example of a sit panel because i've never found it in our market to be cost effective enough to use it i've bid it a couple times but i'm going to talk about it right now with some video and photo examples and then we'll come back and talk about icf okay so sip panels stands for structural insulated panel and what it basically is it's two pieces of OSB that sandwich a large, a thick piece of expanded polystyrene or EPS foam. And it has a great thermal bridging protection because it's a continuous layer of insulation with no studs or joists running through it. And it's a very cool product, but when I've priced it over the last few years for a few clients who have asked me to, I have never been able to find it as good a value as ICF, at least for the walls. I can see value in doing a roof out of it as opposed to a rafter roof that we even do on a ICF houses, but the actual walls, I've just never made them cost effective. It's a very cool product, but right now with OSB being through the roof, I'm, I'm very skeptical about um, you know affordability with twice as much OSB as even a typically framed home. So that would be the downside, but it is a cool product. Okay, so now we're back after talking SIP panels, and obviously that's a way better solution for thermal bridging than traditional framing. But again, the cost right now, especially with the cost of OSB, I just can't see why it would ever make sense compared to ICF, and I'll get into why. ICF, you get the same continuous insulation barrier. You get two and a quarter inches on the inside and the outside. You know, a typical SIP panel is going to have five and a half inches of foam. This will give you four and a half but you also have the thermal mass of six inches plus of concrete. So it is um, from an insulated and thermal bridging standpoint, it is very equal to SIPs, but you also get a structural component of ICF with concrete walls that's just unparalleled. And the thermal bridge, instead of being a full thick stud, it's simply a little bit of injection molded plastic and it's just these little runs and plastic is a lot less conductive than wood and it is embedded three quarters of an inch in on both sides so even these little bridges are covered by an inch and a half of foam inside and out so thermal bridging is not really a factor with icf 
Um, right now, if you watch my last video, it's very cost effective. If you're building in this market, you're going to pay a premium for lumber. Um, concrete has been very stable. ICF prices have been very stable. We're seeing maybe a 5% increase in the middle of the summer due to the, uh, the resin shortage. You know, OSB tripled. 5% is uh, kind of really expected in this market, if nothing else. Almost every building material has gone up more than that. So very cost effective. And again, ICF, we'll get more into the structure you know, benefits in another video. But ICF is the strongest house. It's like I said, 250 mile an hour wind rating in most cases. That's just about any tornado you'd ever see. And the insulation values are off the charts. Thermal bridging is mitigated just by the nature of the build. So again, uh, conclusion of this video is just like the last one, ICF right now, you really owe it to yourself to look into it. And uh, like I said, we can uh, get you into an ICF build as reasonably as a wood build with all the benefits that go along with it. So hope you enjoyed the video. Hope thermal bridging made sense. It's a little bit of a weird topic. Everybody just cares about our values typically. And our values are really not the important factor when you really want an efficient and comfortable house. So hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you guys next time.